Hi everyone, this is Luann and I'm here with an experimental tutorial. I call it an experimental tutorial because I don't know if this is actually going to work. So, if it doesn't work, it won't be going up on YouTube. If it does, well then, good job for me, I guess, because this is, I don't even know how I came up with this, honestly. But I saw a video about a tutorial on, I think it's the foam core board and they made, um, I can't remember what it's called, it's it's basically built like, um, tr uh, not a tray, it's kind of like a sh shelving for, for stamp pads and each stamp pad has its individual little cubby and all of these little cubbies are compiled of a foam board, yeah foam board and or foam core board I don't even I, I think that's it so I figured or sorry I was actually looking for something that I can make to hold my glitter glues and I couldn't find anything everything that I found were like little um, pipe pipe white pipe things that you get at Home Depot and I don't want I wanted something that I can put on the wall and have them kind of sit like at an angle on the wall. So this is what I've come up with. Hopefully it'll work. So what I ended up using is the mailing boxes. I cut them up in strips and these are the me measurements that I have so far. Actually I'm not going to go over the measurements quite for all of them quite yet. I'm going to start with um, my initial idea. But I have the Michaels Studio G glitter glues. I don't have the fancy Tim Holtz ones but I know that the Tim Holtz are kind of shaped this size so the one the measurements that I have are for the fatter ones and I have them in this little shoe box my kids shoe box and I tried setting them up but they just keep falling over so this is what I did I grabbed one of these glitter glues and the the measurements that I will be giving you are based on on my my needs for the amount that I have. I don't use them very often so I doubt, I doubt that I'll get more. So I'm, I'm just doing enough to accommodate, accommodate what I have. So basically what I did is I grabbed one of these and I had these little strips and I ended up with two and three quarter width strips. The length didn't matter at this point but it was definitely two and three quarters because the bottle is about three inches tall. So I grabbed the bottle and I put it on the strip at an angle, at the angle that I wanted it. Grabbed my pen and I marked both sides. And once I marked both sides, I grabbed my Tim Holtz ruler and I aligned the, the line that I drew with my ruler. And I drew the li I line all the way from end to end. And I did that on both sides. You have to make sure that you align it perfectly because you need them to be at an angle. And that's what I came up with right there. So after I did that, I added a little bit to this to this line here. This is the top one, the top line here. I added about a sixteenth, kind of eyeballed it. If you have your Tim Holtz ruler, this is what I did. The Tim Holtz ruler has dashes. I don't know if you can tell. You probably can't tell, but they have dashes in between each quarter inch. So what I ended up doing is I aligned this line with the dashes. And then I drew another line. Like that. Now through trial and error, I realized that this is too too big. So I'm going to show you what I ended up doing once I filled up the entire piece of board. Okay, so this is what I came up with. I don't know if you can tell. This was this is the bottom. This this will be on the bottom, and this is the top, top bottom. So these are my two lines here, which are these two lines that I just showed you. This ended up being the lines that were drawn here. 
these lines were too thick for the size of the board that I was using. I mean, the board that I'm using is fairly thin. So what I ended up doing is I cut on on the top, I did a cut on the top line and then on the center of both lines. And I thought that I would initially cut halfway through the board and I ended up going three quarters of the way. So the distance between here and here ended up being one and a half inches. I ended up cutting down this board to two inches to nine and a quarter. So this board here is two inches across, nine and a quarter inches tall. So I drew a line I right here, which is an inch and a half. So I cut all of my lines down that way. And I basically did the same thing uh, once. Sorry, I know I, I, I don't want to mess up what I'm doing because I, I don't want to confuse myself or anybody else. But what I ended up, I'm going to go back to this piece here to show you how I did the rest of these lines. So I measured between this line and this line, this first line here, not the top one, but the, the middle line here, with my Tim Holtz ruler. I measured how far apart they were, and with this one it was, and you know, I can't tell, oh, I think this is one inch. That is one inch, one, two, is that one, two, three, I think that's three, an inch and three eighths, I believe. So once I figured out the distance between this first line and the second line, I went to the top line and I aligned my little dotted line here where it measured up here, that's where I aligned it on the top one. And I just continued to do the same thing. Once I did my line here, like that, whoops, it didn't come up. I aligned this one to the first dash line on the Tim Holtz, on this ruler, Tim Holtz ruler. But again, this space ended up being too much. And I just kept doing that until I was done with my nine and a quarter piece. So again, what I ended up doing is I just from the edge, mark a line half inch in, and then cut a piece that's like this. You're gonna basically cut it down the center. So you're going to cut from the top line and then through the center of both lines. And then what I did is I just pulled it back and I either pulled it off or I cut it off. So that's what I ended up doing all the way up. And once I did that, I grabbed, I used the first one as a template and I grabbed all of my other pieces, which again are two inches by nine and a quarter and I just lined it up and with my pen I just drew a line through all of my already made slats and then I just cut them out. I cut on on the top and the bottom of the line you can see that, I don't know if you can tell, you probably can't tell it's on the top and the bottom of the line because you want it to be, you want the um, the slat to be thick enough to fit your board. Now, if you're using thicker cardboard or thick chipboard or if you're using uh, recycled banker's boxes or copy paper boxes, you do have to take the depth of the of your paper into consideration when you're cutting out the little um, the little slats on these. Okay, so that is cut. Pull them all back. And you can probably see a little bit better here how I cut on the top and bottom of the my marked line. And then you just cut these pieces off. I kind of cut them haphazardly. They're not perfect. You're not you're not going to be able to see them, so it's not a big deal. Okay, so you have you're going to need, or I'm going to need, five of these because I'm going to do a row of six. Six. 
yeah, it's going to be, is it a row or a column? I'm, no, row. It's going to be a row of six, I'm pretty sure. So I'm, I'm using five of these. Okay, so once you have these done, you're going to go to the um, pieces of board that are going to go in these slots. And that are, is these right here. And these are cut at one and a half inches wide by seven and three quarter inches long. And the cutter that I have, well, I, it's because this is corrugated board, but the cutter that I have uh, doesn't cut really deep. So when I try to cut these, it only cut the top layer, not the bottom. So I thought that would be perfect instead of scoring them because this is thick board, you can't really score it on the scoreboard. I just cut the top layer and to create my score. So you're going to cut this at seven and three quarter inches long. And then on both sides, you're going to score it at half inch. So you're going to have a half inch tab here and a half inch tab here. And these are the, um, the slats that are going to go sitting, or the, the pieces of board that are going to go sitting in, in all of your slats here, like that. And I'm, I am needing five of these as well. Okay, so we're going to go to the back of my board, or of my box. I don't even know what to call this thing, a shelf, I think. So this is my back, right here. And this is cut at 7 and 5 eighths width and 9 and 1 quarter inches high. So it's 7 and 5 eighths width, 9 and 1 quarter inches high. And I determined that the spacing in between each one of my um, little slat pieces is going to be one and one quarter inch. So with my ruler, I marked little spots um, at the bottom, two at the center, and another one at the top. And I marked, actually before I tell you what the measurements were that I marked, because I cut at seven five eighths, I cut it a smidge larger than I needed it to be because these tabs, once your slat goes in, you're going to glue the tabs on the side. So I added a little bit of room for the tabs because the tabs are a little thick. So I did seven and five eighths. So I went over like a sixteenth on this side to make it center or to, to center my ruler. And then I did my marks. I hope that makes sense. So there's, I have a little bit of space here. And then I have, I think you can tell there, I have a tiny, tiny bit of space there. It's seven and a half and then a sixteenth of an inch right there. You can probably see that. So once I did that, I did my markings every one and a quarter inches, which is one and a quarter inches, two and a half, three and three quarter inches, five inches, and six and one quarter inches. So again, that's one and one quarter inch, two and a half inches, three and three quarter inches, five inches, and six and one quarter inches. So I did my, my marks on the bottom, two in the center, and then on the top. And once I did that, I grabbed my ruler and I drew straight lines. And there are five straight lines because I have five of these that I will be taping down. And then these are the pieces for the outside, but I'm going to go over that once we've assembled this. Um, and I actually, I got the idea from somebody else on YouTube, and I will be posting her name um, on the on the uh, description. I can't. Rem I actually don't know. I saw the video once last night, and I'm like, I totally have to do this for my for my glitter glues. So one other thing that I did is I grabbed packaging tape. And I put five strips, and my packaging tape is just under two inches wide. So I did five strips on my cutting mat, and then I cut those five strips in half. And you need two strips, two one-inch strips, per uh, these little slat things. So we're going to grab the first one. packaging tape you can't see it and the reason why I did them one inch is because I have only half an inch space here so you're going to grab your first slat or slated board and you're going to put your tape down you want it to be half and half 
So I have my tape down, and you can't see it. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, I'm using clear, clear tape. And then you're going to align your board to one of these lines. And remember to, <laughs> to tape your pieces down with the slats facing up you know, up is the right the right directions for, you want to make sure that they're all pointing the same way, because if you tape one down this way and another one this way, then you have to start all over or retape it. So I'm going to pull my tape back like this, and I'm going to align it with my first line, and I'm sorry if my big head gets in the way. Align that with the first line there. Make sure it's even on the top and the bottom. And then you glue it down, or you tape your tape down. Okay, and then you're gonna fold this over. Actually, I don't even know, know how I'm gonna do it once I tape up the other ones. Actually, no, we're gonna do this one first. Yes, we're going to do this one first. This way, just one side. Then you're going to grab your other one. Make sure they're facing the, the right way. Nope, that's not it. Oh my god, how does it go? Oh my god, seriously? Okay, it's this way. Phew! Nope. I'm missing a line. See? I told you I'd goof up somehow. Okay, I didn't cut the top one. Or the bottom one. Yeah, this is the bottom. Wait, was I supposed to cut the bottom one? Yes, I was. Now I'm talking to myself. Good going. All right, so they're facing the same way. So I'm just going to put this down here, grab my next piece of tape, and I'm going to have them fall the same direction. So put my tape down over here so it doesn't stick to the board. Okay, so I'm putting my tape down. I'm going to go back here. Pull my tape up. And then align it to my second line. And then press the tape down. Like so. And then fold it over that way. Grab my next piece. Make sure it is facing the right direction. Alright. Align that to my line. Make sure you want to make sure that it's lined up on top and bottom, because that'll make sure that when you put your 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 flat pieces in these pieces, it'll line up, and you'll have. Oh, this one's way crooked. Okay, you'll have straight shelving. Okay, so that is my third piece. I'm gonna grab my fourth piece. Make sure it is facing the right way. Put my glue down. I really hope this video does not erase on me because it has happened a couple times where I'll video, I videotaped a tutorial on an album on a ribbon binding and it just kept deleting or erasing and it was very frustrating because I didn't have to do another album anytime soon so I had to wait until I had to make one because I didn't know what the dimensions would be and that I just need to piece together and upload that one will be going up on Monday alrighty so this is my last piece okay last piece and I'm hoping that this works out well um, the tutorial that I saw she taped these down this pretty much the same way but she used some aluminum aluminum tape 
and she just she had removed only half of the backing the half that was sticking on on the board here and the other half still had the tape so she stuck both of them on and she put glue she taped down one and she taped down the other side but the tape was already attached to the board my tape is not attached to the board already on the other side so I'm hoping that that'll work out I think it will so that'll be fine okay so my last piece is down so now we're going to tape down the other side to make it sturdy so we're going to grab another piece of tape and I'm only going to tape it down to the board to these little brown the this piece I'm not taping it down to the base yet I'm going to make sure the tape is glued down all the way to the edge of this piece and then I'm going to bring this up and then tape it down okay perfect I think that should work fine with all of them I was worried I wouldn't have any room and I can't see my tape oh my gosh Okay. alright so there's that piece and again just tape it to the edge of the board this board and then when you bring it down you can stick your nail into that that 90 degree edge and press the tape down your next piece see so far it's going so well so far it looks like it's going to work who knows it might not tape this down bring that up and then press the tape down I'm so excited I think it's going to work yay and the reason why I even wanted to do this and I will be doing something similar for my ink pads is because you know, I don't use the glitter glues very often, and I want to, you know, I don't want to say that it's mostly because, you know, they're out of sight, out of mind. It's because they take too long to dry. But I do want to use them because I have them, and so I wanted them to be handy and very easily accessible. And when you have them standing up this way, you know, you got to shake them down to make sure that the glitter gets to the, to the top tip. And, you know, they're mostly full, but when they start to get empty, a couple of them are kind of halfway through, so it takes time to shake them all the way down to the bottom, or to the top. But I need, and I need more space, so I'm actually going to hang this on my wall, away from my work area, so that I can have more space to work with. Okay, so this is what you end up with, and it will be standing like that, and your, your inks, okay, let me just put these slats in, there's one, now this bottom one is not functional, and there's a second, now the tutorial that I that I had seen yesterday, um, they these my pieces here don't go all the way down. They they usually connect like this, and I didn't do that because I I it was going to be a little bit it, it, I don't, I don't want to say it was going to be harder. I just didn't want to make it a little bit more difficult than it needed to be. So that's why I just figured I'd leave it that way. But your glue will go in there, and it'll stick out a little bit. I don't know if you can tell, you can tell that way. It'll stick out a little bit so that you can still see the color and you can grab it easily. So there you go. So I'm actually, I don't know if I'm going to put all of these pieces here yet because I know actually I, I needed to figure something out and this is the time to do it. Actually, this is going to be fine. All right, so we're going to put these slats in. You want to make sure that they're even edge to edge. OK, 
Okay, I'm testing, making sure it's going to work. Okay, actually, I think I don't need those side tabs. I think the side tabs needed to be a little bit longer, and they are not. So you know what? I'm going to cut off these tabs. And I'm sure you've noticed that I have not covered my box, my board, the board that I'm using, and I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it alone. I might cover up the outside with some pattern paper, but the inside is going to be left alone. So basically what I'm doing on these slats that I had these side scored panels, I'm cutting them off because my measurement is a little bit too long on my board and this is a little bit too short so your measurement for these should be on well, that's why it should be seven and a quarter by one and a half inches I think I made my scores a little bit too deep so it was just under seven and a quarter Okay, so you're going to grab your slats and you're going to slide them through or your shelving and you're going to slide them through all of your slats here and you want to make sure, and this is pretty s secure and stiff so I'm not going to worry about them moving around. The reason why you don't want to cut too much on the slats is because if you cut it too much, they don't hold on to this piece sturdily. Sturdily? Is that a word? They don't have a good grip on them. Okay. I have this one. And then my last, I'm a little short on this side, but that's okay because I'm going to have the outside of the box and that'll hold my, my glue in. And actually I think, oh, that one has writing on it, it doesn't matter. And no one's gonna see this anyway, so no biggie. All right, so there is the finished inside. For some reason, for this one, I was working on the inside, from the inside out. Oh my God, you should feel how secure this is. All right, so your glitter glues are gonna go in there. Like that. I'm so excited, it's gonna work. Oh my gosh, it's gonna work. How awesome is that? Look at that. They stay. Whoa, sorry, that one fell out. <laughs> but they stay, I'm very excited about that. All right, so now the measurement for the outside. These are the side panels. And the side panels are cut at two and three quarters by nine and a quarter. And I did one of those cuts at two and one sixteenth of an inch from this side. So from here, I went in two and one sixteenth of an inch, and I scored that down. Actually, when I put it in my cutter, it was this way. It's two sixteenths, and I cut it down like that. Same for this one, it's the other side. And for the top and bottom, this is cut at two and three quarters by seven and five eighths. And again, I scored at two and one sixteenth. Okay, so I have my ATG gun. Oh, and what I also have are these little hinges. These little hinges, whoa, I'm going to glue down at the end. So we're just going to put our pieces down. So I'm going to start with 
with the top piece. Actually, no. I'm going to start with my side pieces. I'm going to line that up. And glue that down. Make sure it's secure. And do the same for the other side. And what I did is I, I cut the corners off here from here to the cut or to the, the score line there, the cut score. And that one will go on this side. Like that. That's our piece there. I'm so excited this actually works. It's not pretty, but you know, it works. Okay, so for the top and bottom pieces, I thought I did something, no I did not. Actually I did an extra cut there because I wasn't paying attention. All right, so you're gonna glue the top and bottom now. Actually, before you do that, I cut my angles here, but I wanna make sure that it's going to lay flat. And it's not, so... You know what, I'm just gonna leave it, oh. I, I didn't, I thought that the overlapping was going to be a problem, but I think it'll be fine. Oh my god, I'm running out of ATG. Alrighty, so then we're gonna do the top. We're going to do the bottom. And the back isn't going to look very nice. Actually, the whole thing doesn't look very nice because I didn't cover any of these pieces. I didn't. I usually would have cut, at least painted it with acrylic paint, and I didn't do that. I didn't do that, and I didn't cover it with pattern paper. Didn't distress my edges. Didn't do anything fun with this because I actually didn't think it Honestly, I didn't think this would work, but it looks like it is going to work. So, these are your corners, like that, and this is where these tabs would come in. You're going to attach your favorite sticky on this. And these are going, going to act as hinges to tape down your sides and actually it should have I opened it up and now I'm going to fold this one in like so and actually I'm going to once I'm done with this I'm going to go back with duct tape actually I think the duct tape might be wide enough I think I might just wrap this whole piece with duct tape to make it more secure because what I wanted to do was pierce a hole here and here and run a ribbon through it and just hang it on my wall. And these little hinges, they're not going to cut the mustard. But for now, they will serve their purpose. I will later... Oh, I'm out. Dang it. First time I use my ATG and I run out. Hold on a second. Have this sticky stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to stick this last piece in there. You know what? Might as well just finish it. Gonna go to my neck. And you know what? I should have cut this at an angle because there we go. I'm going to stick my angle on the inside. So that is going there. I'm going to open it up and bring that side in. 
squeeze that together. Yeah, I'm gonna need to do AT or not ATG duct tape all the way around. Use some decorative duct tape. I'll probably do a hot pink. You know what? Or maybe a blue. I have a lot of pink stuff and purple. Yeah, maybe I'll do blue. Get some blue duct tape. Or hell, just use a scotch tape. Doesn't need to be pretty. So, almost done. And I cannot believe. Like, you have no idea. I, I didn't think this was actually going to work. I mean, apart from this hinge thing system that I know is not going to last. You know, the concept of it was, I mean, the measurements, what I, I mean, you did have to tweak some things here and there while I was cutting things, but it was nothing major. I didn't have to start all over. And my last piece, and then we're done. Well, done for now. I'm going to wrap it with packaging tape once we're once I'm off camera. Okay, so that's going to go on the inside. There, and open that up. Yeah, I should have attached this to both sides before I, I glued both sides to that. Okay. So there we go. My finished glitter glue holder. Let me just put these, actually this is the bottom here, put these in here really, really quickly so you can see. I've seen other, this is a little skinny one, that's going to go up there. I've seen other holders, there was, I um, can't remember what website it was, but they had a holder, it was this long strip with holes in them that you can, I think, fit up to, I think it was 10 or 12 bottles of glitter glue, and I was this close to buying it and then I'm like you know what I have more than that and I don't want to I don't want something to overrun my workspace you know I want something that I can put on my wall but everything was flat and these just kept falling off and it wasn't working oh so I guess it's too big for the little ones oh maybe not yeah it's too it's too big for these. So if you're gonna do, if you have your Tim Holtz stickles, is it the Tim Holtz stickles or the other, the good stickles? These are not the good stickles. You know, you might wanna redo the dimensions because that little one, it ain't, it ain't sticking. No. Yeah, he's not staying. But my other ones are. That's awesome. So I can put this on my wall. Look at how pretty that looks. You can't even see the inside. And I am gonna cover this up with a piece of paper. Um, I'm just gonna cut a strip that is, measure. I'm gonna measure this out and cut, um, add half inch score, half inch on either side, and then just kind of snip it at these measurements so that it just slides right in and you don't have to see the corners. So this is my glitter glue box, wall box right there nothing's falling out and if you stick it up on the wall I'm pretty sure they'll stay and if you need to adjust I think with these you might just need to ad adjust the angle instead of having it this way kind of having it more this way so that it's more upright so I hope this tutorial helps you with your glitter glue storage I haven't I've never done a storage um, tutorial or video but I'm I'm I am very very happy with how, how this came out like really really happy so what I'll end up doing and I know I, I know I said this already just wrap it with packaging tape and with my punch hole punch just do one little hole punch here and here and um, it's not glued on top here so I can tie the ribbon together and then just hang it up on my wall so I can just put that up on my wall or just on my desk area, just flush up against the wall. So I hope you guys find this tutorial helpful and thanks for watching.